Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I thought I would make a video to talk about my current love-hate relationship with YA fiction. Um, for a long time, young adult fiction was my favourite genre. It was the, the genre I would always read, I was always buying books. In the genre I was always like so excited about what was like what was coming up and what was happening um, and all the new authors that were appearing and I even went to Yauk in 2015 and I had the most amazing time it was just such a fantastic experience but for some reason like in the past I'd say like six to ten months I've just really fallen out of love with YA and I don't know why um, and I've kind of tried to think about whether it's maybe because I'm just not reading the right books in the genre or whether quite simply there's not that many good books around in the genre which I know a lot of people disagree with um, I don't know if it's just because I've got older and potentially that the challenges and the situations that the characters face and find themselves in aren't that relatable to me anymore and therefore I'm just not really enjoying the books um, and potentially I don't know if this is maybe why I'm finding it a bit difficult but um, I know that obviously and amazingly as well I'm not saying this is a bad thing at all but obviously YA has had a huge influx of um, novels and authors who are exploring um, issues and um, things that weren't really explored before so there's you know you've got books about anxiety mental health um, there's a lot of books floating around at the moment about transgender people um, there's a lot of LGBTQ plus books floating around as well and that can only be a good thing like I'm not saying that that's a bad thing at all but I think because there was like this uproar about there not being that much in the community everyone started writing books like that or a lot of authors started kind of writing books like that and publishers were publishing a lot of books like that and so it's kind of gone from one extreme of having samey contemporary romantic white people falling in love straight people falling in love to being the complete opposite and now we've got this whole eclectic rainbow kind of spectrum of books that are about lots of different people but now YA is very um it's full of those sorts of books and I don't think there's yet kind of this happy medium between the two and there have been some amazing YA books that I've read um in the past year or so but they're very few and far between um so when I was recently culling my book collection because I just realised I had too many books so I decided to sort through them all and kind of get rid of ones that I haven't read and probably won't ever read and also kind of get rid of books that I'd bought like three or four years ago that I just hadn't got around to reading and probably wouldn't. Um, I also went through my young adult shelf and I decided to pick out um, 10 books that I want to try and read over the next sort of couple of months and see if they can reignite my love for YA um, and I wanted to kind of show you them to you today and for you guys to let me know if you've read any of them, what you think of them, and also to recommend me some that you've really loved. Um, preferably, I'm kind of looking for books that are a bit like the Pretty Little Liar series, or something that has got some sort of mystery, compelling, um, kind of thrillery element to it, I guess. Um, Pretty Little Liars is one of my favourite contemporary series ever. Um, I just love the premise, I just thought it was so original and unique, and I would love I have been loving watching the TV show as well. I mean, it's not the most amazing TV show in the world, um, but I just love the idea of it. I just think it's really clever and really quite frightening. I love how people and authors take these kind of mundane situations or real life situations and turn them on their head um, to make them quite frightening. Um, and I'm not really into fantasy at the moment. I guess I'm just kind of looking for some really good contemporary YA books that have got elements of mystery or suspense or kind of thrills in them. So I went through my bookshelf and I picked up 10 that I think kind of follow on along those lines and I'd be really interested to know if any of you guys have read any of these and also I hope they may give you some sort of um, ideas as well if you're kind of struggling like me or you're in a position where you're looking for some more YA books. So I thought I'd show you these 10 books today. Um, so the first one that I picked up off my shelf is, I don't know if you can see that in the light, but it's called Flashes by Tom O'Rourke. Now I picked this up from the works about two years ago I think um, and it was in there like three for five pounds off so it was only like 1.99 or something um, and this book is a little bit fantasy I think or it's a little bit kind of playing on the idea that there's supernatural elements I guess. Um, the blurb says that Charlie has visions, flashes of things that she can't explain. She feels certain they're close to a crime someone's committed against a girl but no one will believe her. Until she meets Tom, a young detective on his first case, a death on railway tracks not far from where Charlie lives. Was it an accident, a suicide or murder? 
The attraction between Charlie and Tom is instant, but can they discover what's happened before it happens again? So this sounds kind of quite up my street, and I and I know why I picked this up now, because it really kind of sounded good to me. So I'm really hoping I can get into this one. Um, it's quite, it's got quite small font actually for a um, book like this. Normally YA books I seem to find they have quite big font, so this actually looks like it might be a really good read so I'm looking forward to this one let me know in the comments below if you've read this or if you've read anything else by Tom O'Rourke I don't know if he's written anything else and um, I don't know anything about him so it'll be interesting if you guys have read this the next book that I found on my shelf is All the Truth That's In Me by Julie Berry um, and I every time I read the blurbs of these books I picked up I'm like oh, I remember why I chose that one now um, and the blurb of this one says after two years missing Judith returns home her tongue cut out her best friend is dead. No one knows what has happened and Judith cannot speak of it. All she can do is silently pour out her feelings to the boy who has owned her heart for as long as she can remember, Lucas. In a voice filled with hurt, yearning, yearning, hope and love, this is Judith's story. And I actually flicked through it yesterday and it's kind of strange because it's not told in... Well, I guess it is told in chapters but they're very, very short chapters. I don't know if you can see. It's kind of like... Um, divided into lots and lots of tiny sections so that I kind of like the idea of that because I'm one of these people that hates long chapters I love a book that I can kind of dip in and out of um, and stop at different chapters so I like the idea of this being really short um, and hopefully I can get through this quite quickly um, I've actually never really heard people talk about this or seen it anywhere else so I'll be interested to know if any of you guys have read it or any of you have read any of Julie Berry's books before I know she's written a couple of others because I remember when I bought this I um, looked at I'm sure she's written others because I'm sure I looked at other books that she'd written um, so yeah let me know if you read this one the next one I picked up, I think I've seen people talk about on Booktube before, and it is The Sound by Sarah Alderson. This, um, again, is a book that I kind of picked up because it sounded mysterious, a bit creepy and a bit crimey. Um, the blurb says, when aspiring music journalist Ren Kingston takes a job nannying for a wealthy family on the exclusive island of Nantucket, playground for Boston's elite, she's hoping for a low-key summer, reading books and blogging about bands. Boys are firmly off the agenda. What she doesn't count on is falling in love, no, what she doesn't count on is falling in with a bunch of party-loving private school kids who are hiding some dark secrets, falling possibly in love with a local bad boy and falling out with a dangerous serial killer. So that sounds pretty damn good. Um, I know that Sarah Alderson has written two other, or at least two, because they're on the back of this one. Um, so I'm hoping that if I enjoy this one, then I'll be able to go and pick up her previous two books um, and enjoy those as well. And I just really love the cover for this as well. I just think it's so kind of haunting and exciting. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. The next one I picked up off my shelf is a book that I think is the second book in a series or if it's not the second book in a series it's the second book about a character but it's a standalone maybe um and it is called dead silent by sharon jones and she wrote a book called dead jealous which i believe is the first book that introduces the character poppy sinclair because it says it's a poppy sinclair thriller so i don't know if i need to read the first one before i can kind of understand com this one completely but um if i do then i might try and borrow it from the library um but i just love like love the sound of this um the blurb says angel whispers will haunt you when poppy sinclair and her boyfriend visit snowy cambridge she doesn't expect to discover the body of a student arms outstretched in the act of smearing bloody angel wings on the chapel's floor suddenly poppy is faced with the possibility that the one closest to her heart is the one committing the most malicious crimes dodging porters and police dreading what she might find poppy follows the clues left by a murderer bent on revenge so i love that and i love this kind of genre of young adult fiction that kind of takes because um psychological thrillers and adult thrillers are one of my favorite genres and i like it when ya tackles those kind of um stories because i think that they're far more compelling i think there's something a little bit more kind of frightening about teenagers like dealing with murders and stuff whereas with adults it's a little bit less scary i don't know i don't know if i know what i mean but yeah i'm looking forward to reading this one the next one I believe is a YA book. Um, I have seen some um, adult bloggers talking about it but I think it's YA and it's called The Dead House by Dawn Kurtagich I think. I'm really sorry if I've just 
completely butchered your name. Um, and I was sent a proof copy of this when it first came out in 2015. So it's been like over a year since I was sent this and I still haven't got around to reading it, which is really frustrating. Um, and I loved the blurb when I, when I received it, so I'm so annoyed that I haven't actually read it yet. Um, the blurb says, 25 years ago, Elmbridge High School burned down. Three students were killed in the blaze, 20 were injured, and one, Carly Johnson, disappeared. For two decades, little was uncovered about what became known as the Johnson incident until now. Da, da, da. So I just love the sound of that and I love the cover as well. Um, and I think I've heard quite a lot about this and a lot of people have been saying positive things. So I'm really looking forward to getting into this. Um, it seems to be kind of told through um, like letters or um, emails or kind of extracts from police records or something. It doesn't seem to like read as just one long piece of prose it's kind of like got lots of different elements to it so I'm looking forward to reading that one again let me know if you've read that and what you think um the next book that I picked up off my shelf is one that I bought when I worked at Waterstones because I saw it come in and I was so intrigued by the cover and the blurb that I just picked it up um and I just haven't still read it which is so frustrating and when I was flicking through it yesterday trying to like work out if I wanted to read it I realized that I actually bought myself a signed copy so that's even more exciting I forgot I had this um so yeah The Killing Woods by Lucy Christopher is the book that I am talking about and I don't know if you can see the cover very well because of the stupid light, but the little tagline, can you see it? It says, dangerous games are played at night. And the blurb for this is, Emily's dad is accused of killing a teenage girl in the woods. Emily is sure he's innocent, but struggles to work out what actually happened that night. That is, until she crosses paths with Damon, the boyfriend of the dead girl. Maybe they could help each other. But Damon has his own secrets about the dangerous games that are being played in the dark. So... It sounds damn good um i just really like the sound of this and i like i was saying before i love books that kind of take um like an innocent kind of books that are set in like our current world that seem very innocent but then it's kind of turned on its head and made quite sinister um i just love books like that so hopefully that's going to be good um, the next one is a book that I picked up in a charity shop a couple of years ago now um, and again I haven't got around to reading it which is no surprise um, and it's called Entangled by Kat Clark. Now this is, um, I think it's like her third, second or third novel, I can't quite remember how many she's written um, but I have read something by Kat Clark before but I cannot for the life of me remember what it was that I read um, but I have read something by her and I really loved what I did read um, and this sounds a little bit maybe kind of a little bit of fantasy I'm not sure I'm honestly not sure whether it is or whether it's just like a bit creepy like real life um but the blurb says 17 year old Grace wakes up in a white room with a table pens and paper and no clue how she got there as Grace pours her tangled life onto the page she is forced to remember everything she's tried to forget there's falling hopelessly in love with the gorgeous Nat and the unraveling of her relationship with her best friend Sal but there's something missing Grace must face the most important question of all why is she here so that sounds good. Um, and again, a mystery, kind of suspense -y, exciting, compelling read. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Also, let me know if you've read any other books by Kat Clark, because um, I'm trying to remember which one I've read. It might have been um, her latest, or the one before her latest. I honestly can't remember. Um, but I have heard a lot of people talking about and loving Kat Clark. So if you love her, let me know. Um, and I might check out some more of her books. I've got three left to show you. Um, this one is another one that I bought about a year year or two ago um, and again just never got around to reading I basically bought it because I thought the cover was amazing and it just kind of spoke to me and said read me um, it's called Hysteria by Megan Miranda and the blurb says you wanted him you needed him you killed him life can change in an instant fear can take you to the very edge Mallory's old life is dead her boyfriend is gone his blood washed from the kitchen tiles still it stains her mind she can't ever go back one road prep school is her new start, but everyone thinks they know what happened that night. They think they know her. They don't. Secrets are deadly. Secrets are the only real currency. That sounds amazing. And I also love the back of it, how they've like done the blurb where it looks like there's been smudges like and like blood and I just think that looks so cool. Um, and again, I think Megan Miranda has written another book called Fracture, but I haven't read that one. Um, and I'm assuming this is just a standalone, hopefully. Um, so again, this is I like it when I find authors that are good and that they've got a back catalogue because then I can go and read all their other books. Um, so I'm hoping that if I love this one, then I can go back and read Fracture. 
The second to last one is a book that I bought when I was working at Waterstones and I think it was one of the books that we kind of was getting, was that we was, that's really bad English, that we were getting rid of because um, it had been sitting on the shelf for ages and no one was reading it and buying it. So I think I got it for a pound and it is called I Know What You Did Last Summer by Lois Duncan. Um, and again, I know why I picked this book up when I read the blurb. I was like, why haven't I read this already? It sounds so good. This really kind of sounds like it could be the perfect book for my kind of PLL withdrawal. Um, the blurb says, last summer, four terrified friends made a desperate pact to conceal a shocking secret. But now someone has learned the truth and the horror is starting again. There is an unknown Avenger out there who is stalking them in a deadly game. Will he stop at terror or is he out for revenge? This summer four friends are going to learn that some secrets just won't stay buried. So basically that's PLL um, and I can't wait to read this. <laughs> I'm so excited. I think I'm going to start with this one because it just sounds like it's right up my street. And the best part as well is that the author has written two other books called Killing Mr Griffin and Don't Look Behind You which means that if I love this one then I have got some other books that I can go and check out and read after this one. And then the final book that I am trying to read or hoping to read to get back into YA is a book that my friend Jenny lent me. Um, Jenny is so good at like recommending books, whatever she, she loves I normally love as well. Um, and she read this book really recently and she said to me she's like I can't believe I haven't read it before, it's like one of the best books that I've ever read and, and I kind of was like okay I guess I have to check this book out then um, and she just she very kindly sent her copy to me or lent me her copy so I could give it a read and it is Aristotle and Dante Dante discover the secrets of the universe by Benjamin Alir Sanez I hopefully haven't completely butchered that name um, now I've heard so much well actually I say I've heard I've seen this around a lot but I haven't actually I didn't really know what it was about until I read the blurb and even reading the blurb I kind of don't really understand what it's about I think it's just about two two boys or I, I assume that they're two boys um, or maybe it's a boy and a girl I don't know but anyway these two people basically um, meet and develop a bond a special bond and I think they become like best friends or something but apparently it's amazing and just by the fact it's won like four awards um, I think it's going to be pretty good so I'm hoping that I can get around to reading this soon um, because it looks good and if Jenny says it's one of the best books she's ever read then I'm pretty sure I'm going to love this as well so let me know below if you've read this and what you think um, and whether you think it's a really good book as well so that is all of the books that I'm hoping to read over the next kind of month or two to try and get myself back into YA. Um, so let, like I say, let me know down below if there's any YA books that you've read recently that you would recommend, but potentially ones that kind of fit into what I've just shown. So like more kind of creepy, mysterious, kind of compelling reads rather than books that are a bit more kind of like... I kind of just want an escapist book. I don't want to be reading about mental health because I have enough of my own mental health problems to like, I don't really want to be reading about mental health right now. I don't really want to be reading about fantasy. I just want something I can get completely lost in and something that will just like creep me out. Um, so if you can think of anything like that, anything like that's like the Pretty Little Liar series, um, anything that you think would be a good match for that, then let me know because I'm really looking for some really good books. Um, and also, I'm so excited because this morning um, on NetGalley, I was ex approved to read the new Sarah Shepherd book, which is really exciting because Sarah Shepherd is the author of Pretty Little Liars. And her new book is called The Amateurs, I believe. And I don't know if it's the start of a new series or if it's a standalone, but I love the sound of it. I think it's about a girl whose sister went missing or something and she's been found dead. And some, like I think it's like her trying to seek revenge or something. I'm not quite sure. I might have just made that up, but hopefully... Um, it will be just as good as the PLL series. So yeah, let me know if you guys have got any recommendations for me and I hope this video has been helpful. If any of you guys are looking for, for recommendations, I can't even talk today. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching guys and I will see you again very soon. Bye!